In this video, we're going to talk about how to write dissociation equations for ionic compounds. So let's start with a simple example. Let's use sodium chloride and let's dissolve it in water. Now, it's important to know the charges when these elements become ions. So we have one sodium and one chloride ion. We're going to put them in the aqueous phase, and we need to know the charges. Sodium is a group 1 metal. It's in the first column of the periodic table. It's in alkali metals, and alkali metals like sodium, lithium, potassium, they typically form cations with a plus 1 charge. The halogens like fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, they typically form ions with a negative 1 or just a negative charge. So that's all we could do for sodium chloride. Now let's move on to our next example. What about for ammonium bromide? Write the dissociation equation for that. Now ammonium is a polyatomic ion. You can't break that apart. And it has a plus one charge. This is something that you need to commit to memory. What I recommend is go to the YouTube search bar, type in polyatomic ions, organic chemistry tutor, and a video should come up with a list of polyatomic ions that you need to know. So feel free to take a look at that when you get a chance. Now, bromine, like chlorine, they're in the same column in the periodic table. So they're going to have the same charge. That is a one minus charge. Now what about this one? Calcium nitrate. Go ahead and write the dissociation equation for that. And also try magnesium iodide. So notice that we have one calcium ion in the aqueous phase and we have two nitrate ions so that's going to be the coefficient for nitrate now nitrate is a polyatomic ion with a negative one charge calcium is in group two it's an alkaline earth metal and group two elements like calcium strontium barium magnesium they typically have a two plus charge and you can also figure this out if you know the charge of the other ion. Notice that we have two nitrate ions. That's a total charge of negative two. In order to balance that, calcium has to have a two plus charge. So that overall, the total charge on the right side is zero. So if you wanted to calculate the charge on calcium, here's what you can do. In calcium nitrate, we have one calcium ion and we have two nitrate ions the net charge is going to be zero now nitrate has a charge of negative one so we can replace it with negative one solving for calcium if we add two to both sides we get that calcium is going to have a plus two oxidation state or two plus charge so you can actually solve for it if you don't know what the charge is now for magnesium iodide, magnesium is an alkaline earth metal, just like calcium, so it's going to have a 2 plus charge. Iodide, there's two of them, we can see the subscript 2. Like the other halogens, chloride and bromide, it's going to have a negative charge. And so that's how we can write the dissociation equation for magnesium iodide. Go ahead and try these. Calcium chloride. Sodium carbonate. Potassium phosphate. And 
barium hydroxide. Write the dissociation equation for each of the following ionic compounds. All right, let's start with the first one. So we have calcium chloride. We know calcium is in group two, so it's gonna have a two plus charge. And we have two chlorine ions, so the coefficient will be two. And we know chloride has a negative charge. I will put the phase aqueous, which means it's dissolved in water. Now, moving on to the next one, we have sodium carbonate. Notice that we have two sodium ions. The subscript is two, so that's going to become the coefficient. Sodium is an alkali metal found in group one, so it's going to have a plus one charge. Carbonate. What is the charge on carbonate? Notice that we only have one carbonate as a whole. It's a polyatomic ion. Now, sodium has a plus one charge. There's two of them, so that's a total charge of two plus. Carbonate, there's only one of them, but it needs to neutralize that two plus charge, so it's going to have a two minus charge. Again, if you were to memorize the polyatomic ions, you're just going to know what the charge is. Now, moving on to potassium phosphate. Notice that we have three potassium atoms, or rather three potassium ions. Potassium is an alkali metal just like sodium so it's gonna have a plus charge now what about PO4 phosphate another polyatomic ion what's the charge on that potassium has a plus one charge times three that's plus three we only have one phosphate so to neutralize that three plus charge we need a three minus charge so it's phosphate, three minus. Now, what about the last one, barium hydroxide? Barium, like calcium, is an alkaline earth metal. Because they're in the same group in the periodic table, they will have the same charge as an ion. In this case, a two plus charge. Next, we have another polyatomic ion, hydroxide. And notice that we have two of them. Now hydroxide, this is one of those things you need to know. It has a negative one charge. So that's it for those four examples. Try this one. Aluminum sulfate, Al2SO4-3. Go ahead and write the dissociation equation for that. So we have a subscript of two, which means we have two aluminum cations. And we have a three in front of SO4, which means we have three sulfate ions. Now aluminum, it's in group 3A of the periodic table, which means that it's going to have a three plus charge. Sulfate is a polyatomic ion with a two minus charge. And that's all we need to do for that one. Now let's try one more example, M3PO4. Now M is some unknown metal, it's an unnamed metal, but nevertheless we want to write the dissociation equation for this ionic compound. So we have three of this unknown metal ion. We don't know the charge so we're going to have to figure that out. We have four phosphate ions. We do know the charge on phosphate, it's three minus, we've covered it already. But the question is, what is the missing charge on the metal ion? Let's write an equation to find out. So we have three of the metal ions and we have four phosphate ions. The net charge has to be zero for this neutral ionic compound. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna replace the phosphate with its charge phosphate has a negative 3 charge. Now 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. So we have 3m minus 12 is equal to 0. Next we're going to add 12 to both sides. So we get 3m is equal to 12 and then we'll divide by 3. 
So this tells us that the metal has a plus four, or rather, a four plus charge. So if you know the charge on one ion, you could find the charge on the other ion by writing an equation. You need to set the equation equal to zero because overall the ionic compound is neutral. 